Hello, how is everybody? Molly May here from Ponder and Ply. I hope everyone's having an amazing week. I, I'm sorry you can probably hear a very loud car outside and we'll let that drive past. And we are back. Um, I hope everyone's had a good week. Happy Sunday. I'm coming to you a bit later this Sunday because I have had the busiest week. I was hoping to feel, film my um, how to style your knits video, but I'll be honest, it didn't happen this week. I had so much on. It's getting darker earlier, so it's harder to film. I'm actually filming in the dark now. So tell me what you think of the lighting. I don't know if it's a bit washed out or a big bright light in my face that you might be able to see in the mirror behind me smooth um but i thought i'd do a knit and chat well actually i'm not going to knit because i can't chat at the same time with this i can have a conversation where there are breaks but i think it'll be a bit stop starty so i'm gonna chat whilst you knit um i'll show you something that i finished kind of um the progress that i've made on some of the whips that i showed you last week and then one request that I've had is to share some books that I really enjoy. So I have written down a list of a few books that I recommend. Plus I've got a handful of books on my table that I picked up at a recent trip to a bookshop uh, that I thought I'd tell you all about. So that's what we're here for today. It's a bit more informal um, as it's already four or five o'clock on Sunday and I'm running out of time to meet, to keep my, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? keep my role you know you know I'm tired it's been such a busy week work's been really crazy I've had a lot of people away from my team so I've been picking up a lot of slack then Rob and I've had a really lovely weekend so my parents booked us the hotel for the weekend it was a birthday present for me it's just a few weeks afterwards and they looked after Mashka which was amazing and we just had the most lovely weekend uh, we don't get to spend quality time just the two of us about mash very often so i i really appreciate it and my mom built made us like a little picnic to take with us and we had so much food which ate lots of food and chilled and talked and listened to music and watched christmas films <laughs> uh, but it was great but i am trying to now run around to sort out everything i did all the tidying so everything out ready for week ahead so I'm still rambling I'm just gonna get on with it so the first thing that I wanted to show you is something that I hadn't even started last week I don't think I had actually had I cast it on maybe I had a tiny bit cast on but I did a test knit for Parker knit and I made the zap cap now the reason I say this is kind of finished is because technically yes the hat's finished but I have not blocked it yet I'm planning on steam blocking it um, because my tension is not amazing um, it's a little bit tight as you can probably see it's puckering a bit I haven't done colour work in a while and I haven't I think I've ever done really small circumference or very rarely done small circumference colour work so and I was doing magic loop which not ideal because I wasn't quite sure how tight to do it I was trying to sp spread out my stitches um, so it's not bad it fits but it's a little bit like a hat condom <laughs> and I made the large size which I think is the large slash, slash extra large looking at the pictures of park I don't think it's meant to be a baggy hat and I did add some extra rows I added two extra repeats of the hat pattern to make the hat a bit longer but the reason I say it's not entirely finished is because I've still got some ends but also my plan is to do a massive like huge red pom-pom on top and I feel like that will make me wear it more because at the moment it's such a cool pattern I love the colours that I chose but it, yeah it just fits me a bit like a hat condom but look at the detail at the top it's such a lovely pattern it's very well thought through very seamless you memorize the uh, color up pattern very quickly so you don't need to use the charts very much the brim is a uh, double folded double no it's not the brim is single folded but when you <laughs> stitch it to fold it and stitch two stitches together which is quite nice because it has covered some of the uh, floats you don't they tell you not he she tells you not to catch any this is the inside of my hat fairly neat carry the red color as my main one but yeah it's just a little bit on the tight side if I show you but yeah you can see my hair out the way if 
feels a little bit like a swimming cap, I'm not gonna lie. It's cute, I like the colours, but I like a slightly bigger hat and I feel like I've just got a bit of an egghead. But I think if I steam block it and put a giant, I mean like really big, red pom-pom on top, it could look cute. If I don't end up wearing it, I'll gift it to my mum. She's got a little peanut head. And as I said in my last video, I've got quite a big head, so. Um, very cute, definitely recommend. It's a really fun pattern and I can lo I'm looking forward to seeing some really crazy colours and things but yeah it's a bit it's not quite the right shape for me which I think is mostly my fault I'm going to check once I've steamed it I'm going to check my gauge and I suspect I'm going to be tighter than the recommended uh, gauge on the pattern but it was a really fun knit really satisfying very addictive and I finished it really quickly that is the only finished object I have for you this week there are two projects I've put my time into one not as much as I said I would so remember that beautiful Monica scarf that I showed you in last episode I was meant to be doing one a day and I just haven't done that I've definitely done more than I had it's just looking so stunning so this is in Zakami yarns it's the Monica star scarf by Yelly's Wonders and I am so excited for it to be finished um, I've done a bit but I've not done a section a day like I said because I've been a little bit addicted to the other project that I'm going to show you in a second um, but I have a timeline because like I said last time me and my sister are going to Camden and I want to get this photographed so I think I'm gonna to have to put a lot of time into that this week and maybe do two sections a day we'll see um, before I go on to the thing that I've been spending most of my time on once I finish the hat this week, I thought last episode I didn't really talk to you very much about what I'm wearing, which is the Birch Pullover by Andrea Mowry. I've spoken about it a lot because I was on Sleeve Island and it's a half fisherman's rib, 2.75mm needles, fingering yarn. I used a Modine, Mondine by Rosa Pomar, maybe? I don't remember that name every single time and as soon as I start editing I remember what it is um, but I have worn this almost every day this week I love it especially now that it's blocked and it's softened up the yarn doesn't seem to have very much memory it's kind of stretched a bit um, and it's not really holding its shape as much but to be honest I prefer it it means it's like fitting really nicely today I did something I think is quite clever if I stand up pull my dress down so I've put a belt on as you can see and then I've tucked the jumper into the belt and then let it drop and then it looks like it's tucked in even though I'm wearing a dress and not skirt I thought it was kind of cute um but yeah I'm wearing it all the time I love it so much I think it's a 100% worth the effort but I don't think I'll ever make another one and I would never do it for a gift knit or something like that because it really was a labour of love towards the end I am really happy with it now what made me think of this is when I was talking about getting some photographs of that Monica scarf in Camden. When I'm making a project, I have like visions in my head of where I wear it. Like there's always like a scene and I managed to make it happen for this jumper. So if you follow me on Instagram, you may have seen and if you haven't already, you should definitely go and check it out. I've posted an Instagram reel of this jumper and it's only little snippets, but I basically went to the beach and filmed a mood. I chose some music, I, I took lots of videos of like the beach and playing with Mash and running around and a little bit of this jumper and that is like what I felt when I was making the sweater. I don't know about any of you but when I'm making something I just have this vision like something to do with it like one of the things that I'm making or when I started the Marilyn turtleneck with that um, again Zakami yarn I can see it in a bookshop and when I'm done I'm going to try and film like a feeling in the bookshop and for me the scarf is making me think of my big Marilyn coat, the big scarf, chunky scarf and down in Camden like going around the market, along the canal, so when I go I'm going to try and film that again. So it, I don't feel this way with every project but I feel this way with most projects so as I finish things I'm going to try and capture the mood and the feeling. I can, I think if I haven't already I will put in the video that I filmed but I can't include the music because of copyright reasons so if you want to see it with the music which is an important part of it then head over to my Instagram channel channel no head over to my Instagram and oh dear head over to my Instagram uh, which is ponder and ply 
and you will be able to see it. It's the most recent thing that I posted. But now onto the thing I've been spending all my time on this week. I just stuck myself with that eye with a needle. <laughs> so I have been working on my design and it, if I say so myself, it is a really addictive mindless knit. So it's a four row repeat once you've done all of the increases. And it is just so good for knitting in the car when you're watching films. Oh, I'm so naughty. I've stopped in the middle of a row because I had to take over from, from Rob when we were driving earlier. I was in the middle of a row. I'm going to finish it and then I'm going to show you what I did. But basically, it's a really, really easy pattern to memorise. You're just knitting and slipping a few stitches most rows. Um, that is literally it. And so it goes so fast and it's so easy and nice to, to use as your mindless knit. Like, I like having more than one knit on a time and you can have something that's more challenging, but this is definitely one of those pieces that some people find boring, if I'm honest, but I like to have one of these kinds of knits on the go at any one time, like a big stockinette jumper or something like that, where you can just switch off and do other things, watch something, listen to something, drive in the car and you don't have to give it too much attention. Um, yeah, so let me just get to the end of this row. I'm at the widest part of the scarf at the moment, so a few stitches and I'm a little bit tangled. Oh, as you can see, it's getting very long. Let me just get through it. There we are, sorry about that. Um, let me get this yarn out the way. So this is my Anya scarf. It's a design I'm working on and the test will go up as soon as I've finished it. I imagine that will be in the next week or two. Although when I talk to you about what I've got to get through, maybe it will take a bit longer. And um, it's knit up in Drops Air in their white shade. So it starts off really thin. And then it gets thicker and thicker and thicker. So that's the length that we're at right now. I'm just over the halfway line. So if I get a bit closer, you can see it's got this lovely slip stitch detail. Starts narrow and then it opens up, getting wider and wider and wider. And this bit's quite wide. So, let me sit down. The plan is, if you haven't seen my last video, for this to be, oh, so fluffy, a scarf pattern. So you can wear it as a regular scarf if you would like. It's gonna have pom-poms on the end. Oh, it's so fluffy and nice. But my actual plan is that it opens up in such a way that you can wear it as a hood. So it's a very, I will do a video tutorial on how to do it, but we're at the halfway point, so it'll be around here. Do it around here. And then you'll have like a, oh yeah, <laughs> so like the vintage, you see all those pictures of the, the women with the sunglasses in the car with their vintage scarves, that's the vibe we're going for, or Russian princess, either way. But it's going to have um, pom-poms on the end, yeah, like I said, you can wear it as a regular scarf and it's going to be really cosy or it's shaped in such a way that you'll have the thinner ends that's not too chunky, but also you'll have the thicker bits that it really does come up and cover your head. And I'll do a tutorial on how you wrap it so that it stays nicely. And it'll have fur pom-poms and you can wear it on its own or with my Anya hat. And there will be some other Anya patterns at some point, probably early in the new year. Um, but I am just obsessed with this project. It's just so mindless. It's what I need. I can do it on work calls while still talking and doing everything I need to do. I just meant it's flying by. Um, I'm halfway through the centre section, which is the same thickness. And then you've got the tail ends. Um, I need to go back and do the end. It's going to be much neater. I've just got done a provisional cast on so I can make the ends look really tidy. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying this product, project um, and I just can't wait for it to be done because 
just want to wear it. Not that it's even that cold, although today it was it was bored to me. It's like 10 degrees. I like it. It's a tiny bit colder, but I had a coat on open, but it was on um, and I'm just really happy with it. So that's what all my time's been going on. I'll pop that down, but yeah, if you are interested in a testing call, I will be looking for people over the next couple of weeks. I have written the pattern, and like I said, I've done all of the shaping on one side and now got to where I want to. So in theory, I could I have a, I have the pattern written out, I just need to like type it up and make it look nice. In theory, I could do a testing call now, but the only thing is I like to show people what they're gonna get at the end. You know, sometimes you've got designers and no offense to them at all, but they'll like look for a test knit when they haven't even finished the sample themselves like they've done a sleeve so you can definitely see what it is but i like like seeing the whole look it's a feel it's like what i was talking about the video at the beach like it's just a feeling to it and i feel like you can communicate that more does that make any sense am i just crazy i don't know i just i have these visions and, and then i need to make them happen um the anya set An anya set is one um, but I need to go somewhere it's gonna snow. I need to like go back to Germany or something with all the thick snow because the videos that I got, the videos, no, the pictures that I got of Anya and I've got, I'm on a little sleigh with Mash and her little red coat. I just, it was just a feeling and I need that feeling again. Um, but I'll have to find something in London because I suspect we won't get any snow and I am probably not traveling this year, so there's that but those are the things I'm focusing on I know I had a few more whips in my last video but I haven't really worked on anything else and I have some new priorities so we'll move on to acquisitions and this will make it very clear what I have new priorities first of all I got this. let me take one out for you mm, look at that mauve I've never knitted in mauve before actually looks quite true I think it's picking the up the white in it a bit from the silk it's a little bit less white than that but uh, this is drops kid silk in what is the color color 31 this is an awful lot of mohair because I am doing a test knit for Calibri by Johanna I think it's Johanna rather than Joanna because she's German. Johanna would make sense. Um, I'm sure you know who she is, she's got a very big following. She has a new sweater design called the George's sweater, which is really special to her because she is getting married in it at the end of the month. She's made a white version. It's essentially a beautiful V-neck back, not a V-neck, like a V back, that big mohair bow at the bottom and then a very simple front with the big sleeves and I just went as soon as I saw it I needed it in my life I've wanted to test it for her for ages I love her designs she spins them out so fast but they're always really lovely this has only just arrived I haven't been able to start it and there's a really tight deadline she put it at the beginning of December but said in an ideal world it'd be the end of November because she wants to release it along with her wedding blah blah blah, blah. so that's a really short amount of time for me to jump on and get this finished considering everything else that I'm working on. I really want to do it. So I'm going to try and start that this week, probably tomorrow, and rapidly knit through it. Um, I'm very excited and I can't wait. So there's that. So number one, the pressure of test knitting. Number two, my chai latte. It's not chai latte, it's just chai tea actually. Um, my next massive. Oh my god. So this is more drops air. Um, this is alpaca silk. Oh, is it? Yeah, drops air alpaca silk. Anyway, in three different colours. So there's a grey, a green and a pink. The pink is for a project of mine that I'm going to do at some point, ideally soon, but it doesn't really matter. These two are for test knits. Now, the chances of the people that are receiving and watching this is very, very slim. But because I am not 100% sure that they won't, I'm not going to talk about it. It's I'm making jump, two jumpers. I still haven't finished Rob's jumper. It still needs both the sleeves doing. Those two jumpers, Rob's jumper, the test knit, my own pattern, that scarf before I go, go to Camden in like a week and a half. Um, it's just a lot. 
in a very short space of time. And then I have some extra things that I would love to make if I have time, but I probably won't. But I really, 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 really want to. Um, one of those things is the other stash acquisition that I've got. Now this is, oh, it's so nice. It's Rowan Alpaca Classic in the colour Eclipse. Oh, look at that blur. So delicious. And this is for my blank sweater by Kim Hargreaves. I told you about it before. Now, I want it now because I want to wear it. I just, I can see myself wearing it all the time. Um, just like comfy chucked on over leggings and things when I'm running around so that I look nice. But I'm actually just really comfy and it feels like pyjamas. That's the, the vibe this winter. But it's a very selfish knit. And I've got all these other things to be working on. So I think I'm going to park it until I've made a really decent chunk through most of this stuff. It might even have to wait until all the gift knits are done. Yeah. We'll have to wait and see. But those are my stash positions. Now, I think I'll talk a little bit about what books I would recommend. I've written myself a list in front of me. So I'm just going to give that a pull over here. Number one recommendation, King Killer Chronicles by, oh fuck, what's his name? Dan Rufus? No, something Rufus? Ah, fuck. Put it in, they're very famous. King Killer Chronicles, the first book is called Name of the Wind. The second book is called Wise Man's Fear. They're hands down some of the best books I have ever read. Do not hate me though, because it's meant to be a trilogy and the author never wrote the third book. And it's been like, 10, 20 years, the author's retired. He said that he wrote it, wasn't happy with it and never released it. And the chances of it ever being released probably are, it's pretty, pretty thin. But the reason I thought of it is that he did a spin-off book about one of the characters that I read recently and it was beautiful. The way this man writes, it's just like no one else. I absolutely love the world he creates and I want to live in it. Now, this book is called, oh, Patrick Rothfuss. There you go, I've got his name. Me trying to think what his name was. Dan. Oh, Dan is one of the other ones I was talking about. Patrick Rothfuss. So this is The Slow Regard of Silent Things. It's about one of my favourite characters. It's a book about essentially nothing, but it's just so beautifully written. The only thing I would say is you cannot read this without reading the other two books first. It will be absolute nonsense. It's about a girl who lives in the pipes underneath the university and it's like a week in her life and it's written very strangely but it will make sense if you kind of make sense if you've read the other ones but it was just really beautiful to read I really enjoyed it. The next I'm going to recommend is by Dan Simmons and that's the Ilium and Olympus series. It's essentially about, it's a sci-fi book but it's like very fantasy e. It's got Greek gods, mythology, elements of the Iliad, Shakespeare characters from The Tempest, all set on another planet. It is amazing and the first book's incredible which is Ilium and then you start reading the second which is Olympus and you're like oh this first book was only setting up the second so that I really recommend and then the other one I recommend by the same author is Hyperion which is also a series I think it's a trilogy um, that one is very much more on the sci-fi range. It's really hard to describe. I don't even know how I would describe it, so I'd say just read it. It's brilliant. What else have we got on my list? Oh yes, so recently I've been really enjoying Naomi Novik. Um, Uprooted and Spinning Silver, two really, really good ones. She's got a new book called Deadly Education and it's a series and I haven't started yet. I've heard really good things. Someone told me it was like Hogwarts, but darker and more twisted. And I was like, yep, that's a book I need to read. So I suspect I'll be reading that one very soon. Then I've got a bit of a, bit of a rogue one here, one that I've recommended to a lot of people. Um, and it feels quite personal. It, I actually have a tattoo related to this book. It's called Tuesdays with Mori. It's a beautiful book. It's not fantasy or sci-fi. It's actually uh, a real person that was interviewed by a former student of his. It's lessons about life and it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. There's one part of the book where he says, is it today little birdie? And it's about d death. It is quite a, a moving book about a man who's at the end of his life um, and he's giving life lessons. And I have a little bit, uh, tattoo of a bird on my ankle that's from that book. 
because it came to me at a really meaningful point um, and it really moved me and I've recommended it to quite a lot of people and every time I expect them to not feel the way that I felt about it but consistently I've been told wow that's a really beautiful book so that is one I will recommend to you and then lastly the sisters of the winter wood it's one it's a very easy read wow someone's pressing their bell constantly outside and singing uh-huh fantastic it's always cocoa around here um sisters of the winter wood very easy read um, very fairy tale -y. it's about some witches in the wood and a town that have outcasted them and a girl that's meddles with magic and shouldn't. Um, it's very easy to read, it's not the most sophisticated book in the world but it's a really fun, lovely read so I really enjoyed that. Those are a few recommendations for you, I could go on forever. I actually started charging my Kindle to go through some of the books that I've read. I will include more books in a future podcast, but I have to start somewhere. The other thing I was going to show you, so apart from A Deadly Education, recently I bought three books. I actually bought four, but one I've already showed you, the slow regard of silent things. When I was out with my friend Matt, um, we both love books. We go book shopping together. And he picked out a couple of books for me to read, so I could go a bit outside of my comfort zone. Well, not really comfort zone, but... I think you always choose the similar types of books for you and it's like oh you read this I recommend this and it's always very related and then you fall down this magic rabbit, rabbit hole for me it was like Russian folklore fantasy <laughs> for ages uh, and sometimes it's nice to have people that know you that can recommend stuff that's not something you would usually pick up but they think you'd enjoy it anyway so the first is Isaac Asimov Asimov Foundation um, this one says, the Foundation series is Isaac Asimov's iconic masterpiece, unfolding against the backdrop of a crumbling galactic empire. The story of Harry Seldon's two foundations is lasting testament to an extraordinary imagination, one whose unprecedented scale shaped science fiction as we know it today. So this is a oldie. Um, my friend read it and absolutely loved it and he thinks I will like it too. So that's on my reading pile. The Hobbit. So I love the Lord of the Rings films, I actually prefer the Hobbit films, but I've never read the books, which is very unlike me. Um, so I thought I would start with the Hobbit book, and then if I enjoy it, read the others, because I have heard that they can be a bit hard going. I don't think I need to say too much about that, everyone knows about that. And then the last one, because I told him that I only read science fiction and fantasy nowadays, he said you need a good detective crime book which I don't ever really read at all. So he started me off with John Grisham, The Pelican Brief. So when I'm in the right mood, I'm going to give that a go. Um, but that's a bit different. I'm still not sold. I bought it and said I'll go along with it, I'll try it. But I just love fantasy so much. I love getting lost in other worlds that it doesn't appeal to me in the same way. But I'm sure maybe I'll become a fanatic and it's all I'll read, you never know. Um, but that is everything that I wanted to talk to you about this week. Hopefully that wasn't too boring since it's only been a week since my last one of these, so you saw a lot of these projects already. Um, I will come to you next week, hopefully with a How I Style Your Knits video. My, your Knits? How I Style My Knits video, where I'm going to pick three of my jumpers and do maybe like three outfits per jumper and talk to you about why I chose to style it that way, any other ideas I have, blah 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 blah. But yeah, I should have a bit more time. I'm gonna film it earlier in the week and get it edited. And that's it. That's it from me. Have a wonderful rest of your Sunday or rest of your week if you're at a different point in the week when you're watching this and I will see you next week. Take care.